<laughs> Good morning. It's been a while, a couple of weeks, I think, but I'm back to sharing again. I just want to bring you up to date. Uh, I've recently changed the name after two years of Zen with a Smile. Uh, I changed it to Hai Yang Zendo. Hai Yang Zen Center. I just recently converted my garage to what I call Serenity Hall, where I'm opening up my personal meditations to anybody that would like to sit with me. And at some point, uh, it may be a teaching platform or a sharing platform for me where I can share in life. Uh, <laughs> the only obstacle is always this language, you know, that uh, my Chinese is certainly lacking and certainly not to the level, not anyway, barely can communicate in the most basic levels, much less uh, present any Zen or any kind of teachings or sharings at all in English. So I came up with Serenity Hall, a hall of silence, where that uh, I won't speak. I'll just make my place available in the garage to come in to whoever comes in. And speaking of which, uh, my young sister Molly just wrote me a very insightful, very good email with the question about for Zen for a Smile since I think January 18th, 1918, January 20th, 1918, I'll double check. But I began my channel, and unlike all the suggested, I didn't put, uh, I didn't pay much attention to who was my intended target, uh, mark, target, audience, and how was I going to grow, and how was I going to, you know, I see these pretty much inane YouTube stations with a million viewers. And I got, I'm proud of my 26, <laughs> but uh, people have suggested maybe my format is too long. Well, watch what you want to and shut it off. I'm working on a format because it's more for me, my 33 minutes and 33 seconds. And I wanted to do 335, and today I'm around 200. And 76 so I'm getting to the point where maybe I'll make shorter messages but changes has been afoot the first big change is that uh, Hai Young Zendo became the name of my Zen with a smile <laughs> and a lot of reasons that I don't nearly smile enough you know my wife is telling me I always have my frowny face on and should smile more so maybe uh, Zen with a smile was not the uh, so now I named it Hai Young Zendo, which is the name of my new sharing, my new Serenity Hall. And it matches up with my new Facebook page, Hai Young Zendo, Hai Young Den Zen Dojo, Hai Young Zen Center. So. It's always changes are good. And anyway, I was talking about my sister asking me that question. What's my target audience? And you know, I had to be honest with her. I never gave it much consideration. I had a calling to share something that is, I'm guided through my meditative transmissions, my meditative messages. I run my life by what my meditation and also dreams be it lucid dreaming, daytime dreaming, or nighttime dreaming. Uh, I've learned long ago that the mind was not designed to be any decision-making mechanism. <coughs> it's designed, it's a beautiful tool for evaluation, taking in information, absorbing information, and then reviewing it, and then sorting it, and then filing it and then storing it. This is the beauty of the mind. What a fantastic tool. 
So recently, my sitting, my meditative messages, transmissions, have pointed me towards it's time to have a more public platform. It's time to make myself physically available to others. I've been practicing a long time about one of the biggest pitfalls of making yourself available to the people is that you absorb their karma. Uh, it's just part of the process. It's uh, one of the responsibilities that I'm going to start using the word teaching more. It's one of the responsibilities that the teacher voluntarily embraces is to lift, at least temporarily, lift people's karma and bring it into within oneself, absorb it. And so you have to be pretty good at uh, learning to discard. We talked about discarding our daily accumulation just by breathing in and breathing out. You must understand that that's, that in itself is karmic events. Karmic's accumulated even if you're in uh, a coma. Believe it or not, and you need to dispose of karma on a daily basis. You need to have the help of a teacher to lift it. You have need the teacher to take you to the precipice and the precipice of trust where he says, jump off the cliff, not being able to see in the misty bottom, not seeing any bottom. And this is the last act of the teacher for the student. He's done, his job is over. And it's time for you, if you choose not to jump, well, your students, your teacher's work is not over. <laughs> but if you blind, if you leap in faith, if you become fearless by discarding your ego, your fear of, your understanding of uh, life as a continuing process, no beginning, no end. So life and death is just a matter of degrees of your awareness of the same consciousness. So discarding of fears, which leads to the leap, which leads to the beginning of your experience as awakened, a fully awakened being. Remember, abiding awakening, a fully awakening, a permanently awakened being does not transgress, does not go backwards. Once you've made the leap, it's a demonstration of trust and it's a demonstration of commitment and acceptance. You will do from then on what the Spirit wills. So the Spirit wills. And where do you find the Spirit? Where do you find the will? I mentioned earlier, lucid dreaming, dreaming, uh, meditation. It's about learning to listen. Learning to be sensitive enough. Learning to be receptive enough of the message messaging process because trust me we're all getting the messages from the same divine source it's just about our acceptance our preparation our willingness our ability to listen to hear and then you've got to act so I do no, absolutely nothing other than the daily maintenance necessary to sustain this physical being, eating, sleeping, exercise, and all the events that go along with those basic requirements, shopping for your 
sustenance, be it mental, emotional, or physical. For your physical hunger, your, your intellectual hunger, your emotional hunger, your mental hunger, those all have to be nurtured and sustained and nurtured so that we can continue with the blessing of having this body, that the specialness of having this physical form is that this is where this level of enlightenment, awakening that I talk about takes place. I believe there's a lot more awakening to do, but this is the one that you need a physical body, bereft, relieved of karma. So open yourself to the public. <laughs> I have no uh, expectations of <laughs> even a soul showing up in the beginning. I'm just going to make it available a couple hours a day. I'm going to sit and welcome whoever comes. I have a sign outside that I'll light up. Probably I'm going to aim for two hours a day, six to eight, and when my light's on, people are welcome to come and go as they will. But again, I have no delusions of grandeur. Uh, my sister, going back to that messaging, my sister, who's my target audience? And I had to say, I'm the target audience, basically. <laughs> I looked at it as a documentation. It's a beginning of my probably training to make myself publicly available. It was the platform that was available to me in my, with my limited resource and my limited exposure, my limited recognition. You know, a guru has, usually has a legitimacy from his guru, or so it's said, but I don't think that's the real legitimacy. The real legitimacy is the proofs in the pudding. How do you conduct yourself? How do you live your life? And ultimately, it's totally within when you've awakened, when you've gone from, when you've passed from non-abiding, non-permanent awakening, when you've leaped off the cliff, you've crossed the threshold, you've gone through the portal to abiding or permanent awakening, you need no validation. You know. And if you have any question in your mind, it's proof again that you aren't quite there yet. Keep at it. It will come when it's meant to come. For me, it came when I gave up seeking, gave up questions. Right now, I'm on the threshold of giving up speaking, giving up talking. I've had a vow of silence for six months. It's been 25 years ago, where I took a vow of silence for six months, which was an incredible experience, and I'm looking forward to the day. Of course, I couldn't do this. I have a wife that requires some response on my part. So I have things to work on before I can take my vow of silence. But it'll be back again. Because I tend to be too loquacious, too talkative when I'm around people that I trust. 90% of the time, like most of us, I remain in silence because there's nobody to talk to. But so when I do find someone that I trust, I tend to run at the mouth. And I'm practicing on my listening skills. <laughs> it's always, there's more to do no matter what you do. So I'm going back to my sister's messages. Uh, and I said, well, just as when I was teaching in the university, I learned, I had big, two classes were too big, 50 students and maybe 5, 10, max 15 who sat up close, who showed any interest at all in what I had to teach 
what I needed to share with them. And the rest of them, as long as they didn't talk, I really didn't care if they went to sleep or they played with their cell phone. As long as they didn't disturb the ones that were interested. So I learned to focus on the few that appreciate, that were hungry, that wanted, that would listen, that would pay attention. Focus on them and take my rewards, be it one or 15, equally rewarding and all my attention and focus and preparation is directed to them with the hope that somehow by osmosis that some of I was sharing uh, might sink in to those that were preoccupied or un in, unable to focus, unable to concentrate, unable or unwilling. So I learned in the university career that if I reach one student, I always said that if a student could remember one thing I said five years after the fact, or that it was a resounding success, no matter how inane their memory was. Because I believe that the, you, if you're exposed to the youngsters, they're overwhelmed by information and nothing sticks because they have attention span that's not longer than 15 seconds and it's certainly not their fault it's a consequence of the changing time it's a consequence of the world that they're trapped in for better or worse their world they're simply reflections so with somebody that's able to spend more time, that's learned, that has more patience, this patience has to be extended to the people that have none. So this was preparation for my YouTube career, that if one thing I shared helped one soul in even the smallest way, all my efforts were validated, were supported. So it's just with this modest, perhaps realistic expectations of the world around me, I tried to sell, share with this that this is just what I shared with you. So I'm going to, I got the sign, I got the garage cleaned, I got it set up. So it's a welcoming space to anyone that might come. So starting from tonight, I'm going to put the light on from 6 to 8 and sit and meditate to music as I prefer to my meditative music and that's my part the message as I shared before but as bears repeating you always hear the Adam or the adage not Adam adage of when the student is ready the teacher appears well, mine was turned on the ear in the meditation mindset. When the teacher is ready, the students will appear. Well, I'm ready. I followed the guidance. I did my part. And now the rest is up to the universe. I surrender as always to the universe, along with daily practices of patience, hearing and listening, must come trust, trust based on surrender. Well, I did my part. I'm going to continue to do my part without free of expectations. 
I'm going to do my part to fulfill my spirit guidance that it's now time for me to begin more actively sharing to make myself more available to the outside world so my sister asked me at going back she said well I, every time I I watch your videos I've watched them several times some some of them multiple times I've watched many of them and I always have the same question well who are you who is your target audience who are you hoping to reach and those are questions that commercialization monetization the first question when you start a tube is if you're going to try to sell something promote yourself how are you going to reach people and facebook and also youtube is always saying well give me money and we'll boost your audience <laughs> why do you think it's all about revenue for them because my audience by definition is probably extremely limited just the other day my wife came to me she says you know we did the math one hundredth of one tenth of one percent of the world's population is awake which we came out to 72 73 thousand people I said where does that come from 73 thousand Buddhas and then we talked about the word Buddhas and she said well Buddha has some baggage for her because she's a Taiwanese and there's a God quality to Buddhahood for many of the Buddhists here you have to look up to the Buddha as a God and they're referring to a particular Buddha even though through the ages there's been many Buddhas and there continue to be many Buddhas it's just a level of Consciousness, not a being. It's a level of awareness, just like the Christ. Jesus, the Christ. Jesus was a Christ consciousness, among many other Christ consciousness. And whether or not Christ is a Western equivalency of Buddha, I know this would be heresy to the Christians, but I don't adhere to any religious dogma. Uh, so I'm free to seek commonalities, seek to unite, not divide. In these times of division, I think all those of us who have a role of uniters have more responsibility looking for commonality helping people be aware of commonality it's much more prevalent and not only to say that it's much more useful it's much more constructive to see the world as united then divided and separated which leads to supporting the ego it leads to depression and sadness and fears and jealousies and pride and materialism. These are what's made possible by enhancing the differences instead of accepting and embracing the commonalities, the unity. We're all in this together, like it or not. And I would hope that people would start to like it, to seek it out. So, sis, my audience is basically it's intended for the people on the on the cusp of going from non-abiding awakening to abiding awakening to making that leap of faith that leap of fearlessness that leap of trust that leap of leaving questions behind once you leave questions behind you no longer if you have no questions you seek no answers it's a time of liberation a time of freedom Basically, most importantly, it's a time of remembering the forgotten, remembering 
what we've always known. We were brought into this world, we were given a blessing by forgetfulness, by forgetting the past lives, by forgetting the unity, by forgetting the oneness, by giving birth to an individual that would create an ego, create a mind that was somehow believed to be a decision-making mechanism so that we could get stronger and get to the point where we rid ourselves of the ego, which leads to the loss of fear, which leads to trust, which leads to which trust is based on surrender, which leads to unity, which need, leads to commonality. There's no place in spirituality for exceptionalism. Our, we're all either non 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 -ex <laughs> non exceptional we're either all special or we're all not special equally not special we're equally special or we're equally not special and sorry i fumbled on that didn't i <laughs> but i kind of like it wrinkles and all and that's part of the beauty of this is part of what i put i could pare this down but i like to see the warts I like to see the imperfections so that I can do my daily ritual of reciting a better man today than I was yesterday and I'll be a better man tomorrow than I am today. My words to live by. The, my words that I practice along with surrendering karma to the Violet consuming flame, which I've talked about before, learning how to dispose of the daily accumulated karma and also the extra karma that's going to be come, coming my way as I'm exposing myself physically to people. <laughs> At this point, I don't have to worry too much because. Uh, uh, there's not exactly a line beating down my door say hey 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 hi young can how can I get in here and get busy on this stuff you know uh, and I went back to the number 73,000 awake fully awakened beings at this current time my wife asked me well you know she's practical sort scientific she's trained in uh, biotechnology I said, well, where did it never come from? And I said, you know, I don't know. It came from a meditation. It's not a common occurrence. I don't get mathematic formulas so as precise as one hundredth of one tenth of one of one tenth of one percent of all the people. I don't get this kind of. This is not how I float. This is not how I ride. So it made me pay extra attention, and it stuck. So I. I have, you know, it's all a guess. My guess is probably as good as you, but I feel like this was an informed guess. And part of it was about exceptionality, non-exceptionality. This, I did it, non-exceptionality or exceptionality. The last thing that comes in the it develops after you're awake, actually it did for me, after you've reached permanent abiding, is that the, as you grow, as you mature into Buddhahood, I call it, you can call it what you like, uh, Buddha resonates with me, and I don't think of just Sakyamuni. There's Buddhas, there's a lineage of Buddhas, and there's many Buddhas alive today, 73,000. Which out of 73, 7, 7 billion, 300 million, it's not a lot, but it's more than a lot of people are aware of. And we're in the times, and this is where I think my teeth, the timing of my sharings lies. The secret lies is that there's more and more people on this cusp, this cusp of the passage from nine abiding, awakening to abiding. 
from non-permanent awakening, impermanent, non-permanent, to permanent awakening. A lot of people on that cusp. And I think those are the people that, maybe I don't find them on YouTube, who knows. But again, going back to my sharing of where I grew, drew satisfaction from my teaching, my university teaching, which I was fully, 100% dedicated, just as much as I'm dedicated to looking at you now, to sharing this with you now. This was the dedication I brought to my teaching. And my expectations were always at a minimal, being fully rewarded if one person was listening. Usually, generally it was about five or six, and sometimes it swelled to 15. But not much, and 15 was a rarity, it was an exception. But I was totally fulfilled. I didn't be cry like most of my colleagues. Oh, the students today, they don't, they don't concentrate, they don't have critical thinking, they're not creative, and I found all of those not true. The, the failing, as always, was in the teacher. We didn't provide opportunities for the student. The Taiwan education stifles creativity, just as it stifles individuality, just as it stifles questioning, just as it stifles critical thinking. The education system is geared towards producing beings that will pr support the status quo, support the haves, work for them for slave wages, find happiness in buying their products. There has to be more, and I think there's more and more people that are looking, more and more people that are searching. Certainly, we're going to experience an exponential growth over the next 10, 20 years of awakened beings to the hundreds or thousands, multiples of hundreds on thousands of the 73,000 that I've been led to understand, exist in a physical level on this plane, in this world, right now. So what I'm saying to you is start to look at people differently. Not every awakened, aware being is going to be teaching. Some choose the path of keeping their cards close to their vest, abiding their own counsel, counseling, not seeking a, or needing attention or an audience. They just live their lives in total harmony. Not bad. <laughs>